Hey guys, it's Miriam, and I'm about to take you through the full process of a painting. You're gonna see every single stroke, you're gonna hear my thoughts as I'm painting, and you're even seeing me create the reference photo. Now, the reference photo for this, I used the exact same method from my reference photo video, so check that out if you haven't. The light that I'm using that you see in it is my favorite light, um, I'll link that down below, but it's a crazy process, I hope you guys enjoy. All right, hey guys and welcome. My name is Miriam and if you're new around here, I'm an artist, I'm a mixed media artist, uh, but today we're working in oils. Now, hopefully it recorded, um, I just recorded the portion of me actually taking those, this reference photo. Um, I used the exact same lighting setup that I, I used for 99% of my reference photos and if you want to see um, I do have a video all about that but let's get started um, let me know how you guys like this new setup now just a few housekeeping things if you see me looking over this way it's because that's where my computer is and I'm just checking to make sure everything's still recording um, second and I'm feeling super self-conscious about it but uh, my studio is super super dusty Let's see, can I, oh my gosh, and messy. I just realized you guys can like see my whole <laughs> messy studio back there. And you can see the reflection of my setup. Um, okay, I'll stop. Okay, there we go. Sorry, back on track. So to get started, we've just taken our reference photo. Now, when I am working from a reference, I always want to make sure that my reference photo is the same dimensions as the canvas that I'm working on. So today we're working on a small one. This is eight by 10 inches. So I want to make sure that my reference photo is the same. Now I am using an app called Pixelmator. I've talked about it a million times. It's like my favorite. But so I'm going to go in here and we're going to pick um, the ratio. So see if I would have went just off of the reference photo, my proportions would have been all skewed because that aspect ratio of my reference photo didn't match. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Okay, so I'm just gonna choose a composition for this. And for, oh, um, and if I'm looking this way, it's because that's where my iPad is and I'm trying, I'm doing this all live. I don't know, we're figuring it out. But anyways, um, yeah, so I'm going to choose the composition for this. Now, because I'm working on such a small surface here, I want my face to be as big as possible. And I've got, there's a lot of stuff around my face. This is um, plastic. I, love, I have like a whole series of paintings, self portraits in plastic or fabric. Um, so that's what this is all about. I just realized if you haven't seen my work before, this probably looks really weird. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, back back to it. All right, I like this composition right here. Maybe I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit. Nope, I liked it. Oh no. Yes, I like it like that. Okay. All right, so this is kind of a weird composition. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start blocking it and we're going to be working with my standard color palette, um, today, but a new addition to the palette. Let's make sure you guys can see this. Cool. All right. A new addition to the palette is chromatic black. Um, and we're going to kind of do the underpainting in this. I'm probably only going to get to the underpainting today, so. Bear with me. Also, this is um, a very interesting, strange experience, painting and just talking to the camera. So um, I'm still figuring it out. Okay. So my first kind of step is to roughen the silhouette. And now this is going to change 500 times, but I just want a rough idea figuring out the placement of where I want these pieces to go. Also, I just realized 
I'm probably mouth breathing. I'm sorry. Okay. I don't know, maybe I'll, I should play some music in the background. Like now. Okay. So. Well, that's interesting. Um. Okay. Am I still recording? I'm cutting that all out. Okay. So I have the general silhouette here. Uh, it's an interesting shape for sure. Am I worried about it being accurate at this point? Not at all. Not at all. Okay, and then I'm just gonna... And I'm actually not looking at the shape of the fabric. I'm looking at the white space or gray space all around her. Okay. It needs a lot of work. But again, not worried about it. We are going to go for the inner bounds now. Now, here's the thing for me. Um, because my my favorite, I, I don't usually like go in with a sketch. I like to just get right into it. But one of my favorite kind of tips for making this method work is disregarding previous information when you go to place down your marks. Now, what I mean by that, if I say that right now, this is the top of the forehead, the, where the forehead meets the hairline. If that's that spot right there. Well, when I go to place the eye, I'm going to be placing the eye in isolation without regards of my previous marks. So when I go to place the eye, it could be really easy to say, oh, well, the hairline's here, which means I'm going to place the eye here. But if I get my hairline wrong, if I'm off a little bit on my hairline, and then I base the eyes off of the hairline, well then they're both going to be wrong. And then eventually I'll place the nose based off of the eye. So one mistake can snowball. So what I do is I like to place everything in isolation from one another. So I don't take into I, I don't consider what the previous shapes are. Um, I'm, I, I ramble a lot, I'm sorry. That was, that probably made no sense. Okay. I just don't want my mistakes to compound. And that's why sometimes you see me start off with kind of these really crazy proportions or really weird things out of whack. It's because I'm, I'm, thinking about each piece as its own, where it goes. And then at the end, then I'll say, oh, well, I can see in my reference photo that the nose and the eye aren't that far apart. And then that's when I do all the reconciliation. I'll just get to painting. If you're wondering what this red is, I don't know, let's see, is the camera picking that up? Um, it's because I didn't clean my brush well enough. It happens. Okay, so, got the general inside shape there. I'm gonna do the arms, and then we're gonna start doing big general placements of some of the inner shapes. I'm 
I love drawing hands, or painting hands, rather. And what you're seeing here is the same method that I always use for my hands. I find it the simplest, most stress-free way. But I do have, I have a tutorial on that, um, but it's on Patreon. All right, so in my head, I'm like, this is looking great. But I realize from your point of view, you guys probably think I'm a crazy lady. But it's good. We, we're going to refine and refine and refine with each passing layer. Alright, I'm just going to rough in... Some of these shadows. All right. You guys got to give me um, some topic ideas to talk about for the next video so you guys don't have to sit in my awkward silence. Okay, so we're almost done with that. Okay, and I'm going to go in and kind of block in all these dark shadows within the plastic. I'm squinting down. I do this all the time. I kind of embarrassing seeing myself do that <laughs> in the camera. Okay. Um, sorry. Okay. But I'm just squinting down when I look and roughing that all in. Also, no notice how far back I'm holding the paintbrush. I'm doing this because it forces you to be loose. It forces you to disregard details at this stage, which is exactly what you want to do. And it can be really hard mentally focusing on the big picture. And so little tricks like that, practical tricks that help. All right, so this surface is a panel. It is completely smooth, like completely smooth. And um, when you have layers of oil on it, it's extremely reflective, which is, it's such a cool effect. And I think it's gonna look really cool with this um, plastic. I've done a lot of these plastic painting paintings, but I've never done this black plastic it's like really dark with a dark background. So is it going to work? Who knows? Okay. This is all off. I can now see. So I'm going to go in with some thinner and just knock a lot of that back. So I don't always go in with an underpainting. But when there's a lot going on, when it's a complicated portrait, and for me, this is going to be fairly complicated, um, it helps to have an underpainting. Okay, so like, I'm measuring right the why I'm making these adjustments. Okay, so. We'll break, I'll break it down. Up until this point, I've just kind of eyeballed everything. Now, I'm looking in my head and I'm using comparative measurement. 
And I'm going with really big pieces right now. Um, and then I'm gonna work my way to smaller and smaller units of measurement. So for example, the hand on the right side, I just said to myself, well, from the distance from the top of the finger to the bottom of the image, how many of those can I fit above that? Like how many units high is that? And it's over one. But I have my tip of my hand right here. This unit of measurement, if I took that same unit of measurement, it would have to, my canvas would have to be this tall for it to be accurate. So that's why I know I have to change this. So that's why a lot of times my initial effort looks really crazy. And it's, it's because I have to have something down and it doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter how unrefined or refined. I just need something to help me with the measurement. And then I can start marking out where these go. And I might not get it right on the first try or the second try, but eventually we get it right. It just takes enough chances. I just mumbled for so long. So this whole time, everything I've been doing, I, I have my eyes defocused when I'm looking at my reference photo. And that's probably why, you, maybe you have noticed when I go from here to there, it takes a second for my eyes to refocus. So that's why if I look crazy, it's like, it's because I'm literally just looking at my reference image with defocused eyes the whole time in this stage. Okay, there was a point, what was I um, trying to say? Oh, this whole time I've been measuring. Um, I Like right now, I'm thinking of a clock and the side of the inside of her arm right there. I'm saying to myself, okay, what time on a clock is that? And then I'm, I'm putting that same time here. The other thing you could do is use your paintbrush to measure like that. I won't go into a full tutorial on that if you guys, um, but this is, a, it's a cool method. I'm um, sorry. Okay. Focus. The other thing that I do, and I, this might be hard to explain, but any singular point on my reference photo, I will think to myself, what does a rectangle look like from that point to the closest corner? So for example, and um, I might have to draw a box. I'm looking at, at the computer to make sure I can see what you guys see. but. Let's say I took, and, and this is what made me think of it because I was right here in this area, the corner, 
see that little corner where that should be? Now, imagine that I made that into a box or, or a rectangle. I mean, it's a box in this case, but if I just took that point right here and I went up, and across. So I made a rectangle to its closest corner. And I'd say, okay, this is that shape. This looks like a square here. And then I refer back to my reference image. And I do the same thing in my head. I look at my reference image. I look at this point here and I say, okay, what shape does that make? And to me, it makes a box. So I'm feeling pretty good about this right now. Now my box could be too big or too small, but I'm feeling good about the proportions. And I am over a little bit too much. There we go. And then once I take this back, it'll fit nicely in there. Now I have, I, I get these blue rags. I have a friend of a fam family friend who works in the medical field and they bring me these rags. It's amazing. But, so if you see what I'm, I keep looking down here, it's because I'm wiping my brush off on the rag. Okay, so. See, I, I kind of got distracted there and I lost the point. So I like this process because it's both additive and subtractive, meaning I can add paint or take paint away. I don't need to pull out white. Um, it just, it makes things a lot easier. Now notice I'm, Still haven't touched facial features, um, haven't really thought about the proportions of anything else. I just want to make sure I have my outer area correct first because then it'll make everything else easier. And I don't want to go into here and start doing stuff based on here because then I might need to change something out here. That didn't make sense, did it? That was a I don't know. I, it makes sense up here in my head. But I realize I might just sound crazy. It's a weird thing, talking to yourself. My eyes are still defocused, both when I'm looking here and when I'm looking here. All I care about right now is if I squint my eyes, if I defocus my eyes, if I blur my vision, does the blurry version of this resemble the blur blurry version of that? So this, it's a, such a therapeutic method. Like if I showed this to someone right now, they, they'd be like, what in the world am I looking at? It's just, it's fun. It's fun to make. 
It's relaxing. I feel like if I sketch this out or transferred it on here and then I had to sit here and paint within lines, it wouldn't be as relaxing to me. So, if I'm, I'm going in with this chromatic black right now, um, but if this were a colorful background, what I would be doing um, would be putting in local color everywhere. The local color of all of this just happens to be black. All right, let's see. Can you guys kind of see the vision? Can you kind of see? See it starting to take form? All right, let's get into the face. And now here for my starting, starting go at the face, I'm gonna go in with the local color and I'm gonna use my color picker tool just to help me. I'm gonna zoom in, let's see. It's like really yellowy skin. Okay, can you guys see that? Awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna mix up that color. This is like not the sturdiest solution. I know the skin is looking really yellowy. I'm now noticing I, does my skin look yellow? I look a little jaundice. Um, all that to say, I'm not gonna make it as yellow in here. So the skin is a lot um, more pink, sorry. It's a lot cooler here. Okay. I'm gonna just lay down that color. You know it looks like I'm adding it, but I'm really just taking it away. And you might be wondering to yourself, why is it so dark? Well, it's cause I'm gonna go in with my lighter shades next and I, I wanna have that dark on the edge because I really want to show the, the form when it, go, we'll see. Hopefully it all makes sense. But it's gonna help it look more 3D. It's gonna build up the light, like we were sculpting it.
See, already this feels like sculpting. Okay. So I'm going to stop, stop right there. And... This is way... So funny. It probably looks so crazy. It does look so crazy. But to me, I'm like, yes, we're on the right track. Every time I add a new feature, new body part, new placement, it gives me one more thing that I can use for comparative measurement. And so that's why we start off really kind of crazy, but then the more info that we have, the more it kind of rapidly improves. All right, so I'd say this is like first pass done. It's 
good guess of where some of the features are, um, or at least the main shapes, but we're nowhere near accurate. So now I get to go in and do my second pass. And again, you're gonna see me, I'm just kind of staring at my reference photo a lot because I'm, go I'm going through different measurements in my head. Like right now I'm looking at the placement of the top of her head. The, the difference in the distance between the top of the head, let's see, to the top of the image from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin. Okay, when I do that, it's this to here is just slightly more than from here to the top of the head. So when I look here, this is, it's quite a significant jump and let's measure it. That's one, two, it's like one and a third. So either my chin is too low or my forehead is too high or a combination of both. I think that forehead needs to come down. I'm placing, I'm looking at the corner of the forehead and I'm doing my little box trick. I'm placing my box. What does the box look like there? And it actually, I think it would be there. Yep, I feel good about that. Now, I know the brush strokes look crazy, and that's because they are crazy. But, I like crazy. Now, what is gonna happen is, remember, I mentioned this is a really reflective surface when you get layers of oil on it. Well, all of these different layers, all these crazy brush strokes underneath, they're all gonna reflect differently. It's gonna look really cool. I'm, I'll show you one that I did in red. Put it, let's see if I can put it up on the screen. All right, and the red effect around her is the same effect that I'm going for here. I'm just looking at the planes of the hands. Like, look at how blocky. We're just imagining it as best I can as a three-dimensional shape. Always a mess. Okay. What area was that?
not working. I'm not focused on fingers or details. Or just, I, I think of each one of these pieces as clay. Okay, so if you had that hand and you were going to sculpt it, well, you'd have to start with a big chunk of clay first before you can start working out the pieces and adding more clay. So that's, that's what I'm doing here. This is the block of clay and I'm just slowly chipping away or adding paint. And I'm just trying to build the form. Understand the form, build the form. Just make it come to life. When we start to get more paint on here, the other thing is it's going to start blending in just such a cool way. And I can already see it's starting to happen. Alright, so when I start to work on the shapes and the angles and I start to actually finalize placements, I do something in my head that, um, I don't know if there's like a name, but I picture a balloon or a marble. And so I just looked at the, the hairline where the forehead meets the line. I started in here and I thought to myself, okay, if I released a balloon, where would it go? That's like, okay, well, go up, but very slowly. Up, and go up a little faster, and then the balloon would decrease at a faster rate. I'm just following that path. And then the marble is, I would do the same thing on the jaw. Like right here, if I dropped a marble right here, fall very fast. But on my reference photo, if I dropped a marble, it would roll at a lesser angle. Saying some of these things out loud, I'm like, oh, I sound like a crazy person. But tips, like things like that just help me visualize what I need to do. And I'm still, my eyes, this whole time that I'm looking here, my eyes are defocused. All right, at this point, we're still building up the form of the face, right? I'm making it look 3D trying to at least. I know it still looks crazy there, but have faith. All that to say is I'm going to start roughing in 
where some of those features go and not because I want them in at this point, but just by nature of me marking in this light, everywhere that's not light is going to be shadows. And so you're going to start to see the placement of some of those items and where they're going to go. Um, also, I do this. To, maybe, uh, maybe I feel like I'm doing this, but I'm just changing my perspective as I'm looking at it to make sure everything looks right. I'm literally trying to see this in 3D. Like, I'm not picturing that this is a flat surface, and so I'm like trying to look at it from different angles. So, if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing. Okay, I also want to point out the skin, everything that we've done so far, it's only two colors plus white. So my next go after, the, after this, I'm going to like glaze in, we're going to do the reds, we're going to do yellow, we're going to do the cool tones, all that's going to come much later. Um, right now I'm kind of only focused on positions and form. I mentioned earlier in the very beginning, I wasn't looking at stuff in relation to one another. Now that I have all my general placements in, and now it's time for me to kind of refine these placements, now I definitely am looking at everything in relation to each other. And that's why you see me just kind of following these shapes. And no, not worried about gray skin tones or muddy colors at this point. As long as you know what causes it, you can avoid it or fix it.
Also, I'm playing music in the background for you guys, but me, as I'm sitting here, I'm in complete silence um, because I want you guys to be able to hear me. But normally, I'm listening to music, so I just, this is kind of a weird thing for me and probably why I'm talking so much. Because normally I don't have to sit here with my thoughts. I just listen to music. And I have not used any medium at this point. Only thinner and paint. Medium will come later when I need it. I just did that box trick with the corner or the top of the finger right there so I can now see that all this is too high. So this is what I mean by we just we keep refining and the more information we have the easier it gets to compare to other things. tornado siren going off. I don't know if you guys can hear the storming going on in the background.
Okay, now at this point, I am gonna use a little bit of Gal Kid. Now, I don't typically use this, um, but I've been out of my normal non-toxic medium that I typically use, um, and I have this bottle laying around. So I am using Gal Kid right now, and um, we're just gonna start going over some of these areas with the second layer and start to build up color, start to or continue to work on form. And also what you guys are seeing is my iPad screen um, here and you can see I can make this bigger or larger. I've purposefully kept this smaller this whole time like that on the screen because again I, I don't want I don't even want to give myself the chance to look at details yet. So by keeping it small like that um, prevents me from doing that. Now the other thing you might notice is as we're getting further into it, I am gripping my paintbrush closer to the bristles now because I want more control. And then by the end, I'll be like this. I'll be gripping all the way up there. I really want to give it this cool look that just looks like it's built up. Like I want it this plasticky, I want it to look like it's coming out from you. And I think we're just going to keep building these layers and it's going to end up looking so cool, especially with the reflective background under. It's one thing about pictures is it just it never shows how cool and complex an oil painting could be in person.
Now I'm just doing the same thing I did on the face, but all around here.
make sure I didn't get scratch my face with paint. Wouldn't be the first time. All right, hey guys, it's Miriam, and it's day two the next morning. My camera cut out last night, uh, the batteries died, so that's why it kind of ended abruptly. Apologies for that. So it's next morning, I'm so tired. Um, the coffee has not kicked in yet, and I also have a sick kid at home this morning, woke up with a sore throat, so if you hear cartoons running in the background, that's what's going on there. But so we have this first pass, right? We did our first guess, we checked, and uh, now it's time to do another check. Now, a lot of times, um, just simply getting time away from it and looking at it with fresh eyes, you see a, a whole lot of differences. And I can tell right off the bat that already this area, like this line right here, the edge of the face, is too close. Oh, am I frozen? But this gives us a really good opportunity to look at the painting with fresh eyes. Um, a lot of times, just looking at it with fresh eyes, you'll see a lot of glaring mistakes. And I can see um, right off the bat, I this, the edge of the face here, is uh, should really be much further over. So like already I know I need to go in here and fix all that. This is probably too high. And I can use all my tricks, like measuring in my head for this. Um, but what I'm going to do, I want to show you guys this tool, and I've talked about it before, but it's called a proportional divider. And um, I'm going to use this on my reference photo. And then use it on my canvas and um, it's going to help me make sure my measurements are accurate. Um, now I am super tired like I mentioned and um, 
yeah, just really tired. So I'm probably not going to talk a whole lot, but I will still talk you through the process as much as possible. But you guys are going to just see me. I'm going to go through, check my measurements, and go from there. Okay, so on my reference photo, I just saw that from the top of the picture to the top of the forehead is the same distance from the top of the forehead to the bottom of the nose. Let me just verify that again. All right, yep. And so I need to adjust mine. Okay, already I'm feeling a lot better about that. The other thing, you guys saw me, um, I wanted to mention, I keep looking over there and it's because I have my computer screen showing what you guys are seeing right now. And sometimes just looking at your painting from a different perspective, like looking at it on a different screen helps break up your vision and, and helps you to see things more clearly. It's the same thing if you were going to turn your painting upside down. I could do that too. Um, I could take a picture of this and look at it at the picture. Anything to kind of um, break me away from what I think I'm seeing versus what I'm actually seeing. All right, so now I'm just going to do another pass over this, really focus on where these features are gonna go and um, start to lay in another layer of value where it's needed. Sorry, and the, I have uh, three different devices right now streaming to my computer to record this all. So if my computer goes out, then the whole the whole stream ends. So um, sorry, but I'm just I'm just still going through this process, double checking over my work, fixing all these different mistakes that now are popping out to me. We're just getting closer and closer. That's all I can ask of myself is, I don't need it to be perfect. I just need, need it to be closer every time that I work. Can you guys see the reflection of the brush on here? It's so shiny. I love it.
Oh, that's completely dry. We're gonna mix up a new one. And now as I build onto the layers here, I am going to increase the saturation. Remember, I want this to look like it's, it's really coming out. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm building up these slow layers. And um, when things come closer to you, typically they're higher in chroma um, and they're higher in contrast. So as we build up, and uh, um, again, I'm thinking of it like sculpting. As we build up these layers, I'm just going to slowly increase the color. And I'm just guessing at these facial features, like that's not a nose, that's not an eye there. Um, but we're just starting to, to block those in. And notice still at this point, I haven't added a full color palette. We're still just working basically with these three colors. I've added a little tiny bit of red, um, a little bit of vermilion, but just a little tiny bit. All right, I'm gonna turn off this camera, but I'm gonna leave everything else playing. Um, I just, y'all don't wanna see me yawn for the next 30 minutes while I wake up. But um, actually, 
I'm gonna end it here because I think we're getting at like, uh, I don't know, we're probably over an hour and a half, maybe two hours now. And um, I'll put everything in the second video. So I'll put this one out and um, yeah, this is a crazy process, but it's fun and we're gonna get there. It's gonna look good. Trust the process. Bye.